Hi everyone, I'm in about to your continuing coverage now of last night's deadly shooting in Las Vegas. 58 confirmed dead so far, over 500 injured. We're going to keep telling you what we know as we know it right here. I want to go back down to Washington, D.C. and ABC's political director, Rick Klein, who has been following these events very closely. And Rick, it really strikes me now that this moment is bringing into sharp focus whatever this president's policy will be and his approach on gun control moving forward. This is a man who campaigned on strongly advocating for Second Amendment rights. But our colleague, Chris Donovan, unearthed an interview and pointed us towards this from just two years ago, almost to the day, exactly to the day, actually, that George Stephanopoulos sat down with then-candidate Trump. And it gave us maybe a little bit of insight into what we may see from President Trump moving forward. Yeah, and his reaction two years ago was that bad things happen uh, in the United States or anywhere. And you can pretend with a lot of talk about policy changes that you can prevent those, but you can go back a thousand years, a million years, and you would have had crime. And his suggestion basically is that it's not a gun problem. Uh, and and not, not a surprise there, Amna. This is not a White House. This is not a president that's likely to pursue anything regarding uh, new gun laws, new gun restrictions. Uh, they are very strongly pro-Second Amendment, as you mentioned. The NRA was very, very strong behind President Trump, and they're going to oppose, even though we haven't heard from them formally yet, they're going to oppose any new uh, restrictions on gun ownership or the ability to, to procure weapons. So that, I think, is kind of a calcified debate, and I think the president plays into that, and, and he has made clear previously that he does not believe there should be new gun laws. I don't expect that to change today. So John Parkinson, who's over on Capitol Hill for us right now, give us your take on this, because obviously, as you mentioned earlier, Whip Scalise, who himself is a victim of gun violence, uh, issued a statement calling this a tragedy. Gabby Giffords, a former congresswoman who, of course, was shot in the head in 2011 um, and experienced a full recovery, thank goodness, has been talking about the need for greater control. This is her earlier with her husband, Mark Kelly, speaking out of, about last night's shooting, also tweeting about it in uh, over the course of today. So, John, what is the what's the plan moving forward here? Are we likely to see a heated debate? Are there members of Congress who would step up in this moment to say now is the time to do something? You know, I think, as Rick said, that the Republicans are in control here in both the House and Senate, and we're unlikely to see any major uh, action on that front. But tomorrow, the, the House uh, Democratic Caucus on Gun Violence Prevention, which is chaired by Congressman Mike Thompson of California, he's a former Vietnam veteran. And um, over the last couple of mass shootings, especially in the wake of Newtown, he uh, you know, has come out to be kind of the, the face of Democrats to speak on, on issues to strengthen the gun laws and uh, to prevent uh, these sorts of violence. And of course, also in sharp focus is the man believed to be behind these attacks, 64-year-old Stephen Paddock, John Cohen, ABC's contributor who joins us on the phone. Uh, I want to ask you about this motive, as we mentioned earlier, is something investigators are going to be digging into again and again. We know that ISIS, via its news agency and public relations side, has put out a statement claiming responsibility, saying this man converted to Islam and this was carried out in the name of ISIS. And of course, investigators haven't found any links there so far. But is this something that they'll be digging into? Yeah, absolutely. Investigators will be looking at social media uh, postings by this individual. They'll be looking at notes. They'll be interviewing people. And they'll try to ascertain what was it specifically that motivated this attack. Um, but this is also sort of out of the ISIS playbook these days. Uh, ISIS will uh, take credit for attacks, whether they planned and, and, and oversaw them being carried out, whether they were committed by by what they saw on the internet or even attacks that have nothing to do uh, with their cause. It's part of them trying to project a global presence. And John, one of the other questions everyone will be sure to have in the days ahead is, of course, you see the pictures from last night, you see concerts like this, large gatherings. You mentioned earlier in our conversation, it's almost impossible to fully protect those kinds of venues. Are these the kinds of things we'll see law enforcement agencies asking people to avoid or to be more vigilant in or to approach differently in some way? I, I don't think law enforcement asks people to avoid these types of events. Uh, law enforcement wants people to go out and not be afraid and to live their lives. Uh, the EU will probably see increased, continuing to see increased security presence around these types of uh, major crowded events uh, and around soft targets. But your point about being vigilant, I mean, that's just where we are today in our society. 
when people go out, whether it's to a shopping mall or to an entertainment event or to a sporting event, you just have to be aware of your surroundings. You have to think to yourself, if I, have, if I were caught in an active shooter type incident, where would I run? Where would I, how would I leave the location? Where would I hide? Um, what would I do if I was, had to confront a shooter? I think it's unfortunate and it's sad, but it, it's, just, it's just the way our society is right now. And Rick Klein, uh, keeping an eye on the president, of course, We've, we're all watching very closely the statement he gave earlier today. A lot of people were wa waiting and wondering how quickly he would weigh in on motives or any other details that have yet to be fully fleshed out by investigators. And whereas the president has been quick to weigh in on events that happen elsewhere or under different circumstances, he's been somewhat reserved so far when it comes to his response to last night's shooting. A markedly different tone than we've seen from President Trump just on other crises that are facing this White House. And Amna, as you know, this is a White House that craves crisis and seems to seek out controversy. There's no need for him to seek it out anymore. It has visited him and it has visited him four square. You have the crisis still in Puerto Rico. He'll be going down there tomorrow before he goes to Las Vegas the next day. And I think the tone that he tried to set today with the moment of silence, talking about this is a sad day, quoting scripture. That is about as conciliatory and somber a tone as we've seen from this president. And I remember some of the, the, the highlights or lowlights of the Obama years, and it seemed like President Obama got more emotional talking about shootings, mass casualty events, than just about anything else in his presidency. I think you could say the same thing about President Trump, at least so far. And there will be time for policy debates, as, as I think they'd have to acknowledge, and he'll have to get engaged and have a position on some of these issues. But for now, at least, uh, this seems to be a moment for the president to try to seem, for lack of a w better word, presidential in the face of, of a national tragedy, an unspeakable tragedy. But Rick, of course, one of the real questions moving forward is not just the response today, but what, if anything, the president chooses to do in the months and years ahead in the way of leadership on this issue. And it strikes me, look, just look over the last five or six years, you know, 58 at least killed last night in Las Vegas, 49 killed in Orlando in 2016, 32 at Virginia Tech in uh, 2007, 26 at the Sandy Hook Elementary School back in 2012. And of course, we remember that as sort of a defining moment when it came to President Obama's response to gun violence in America. Unfortunately, we're gonna see more of these moving forward. Do we think that President Trump may evolve his position now that he is president and no longer a candidate? I would not count on it. And I wouldn't count on the political situation changing markedly. I do think there's a more, more of a likelihood uh, willingness to engage in the fight on the left uh, but they are very mindful of the election results last year, and they also know that gun control, uh, sorry to say, has just not been a voting issue. People may agree with the need for background checks and need, agree for the need for limits on silencers. They haven't voted that way, though, and there's a lot of hesitation about engaging in that fight. And I don't think there's anyone that's very optimistic about President Trump, uh, who's a loyal, loyal to the people that brought him there. The NRA stuck by him during some very tough times. They have already suggested uh, throughout this, this term that they're ready for any fights that come. I don't see an evolution in that. And you mentioned Sandy Hook, Amna, and I covered uh, that, that awful day in the aftermath, and, and I, I, it got very close. The politics of it did seem to change. Uh, they got a vote uh, on the floor of the Senate that ended up getting blocked, and it was, uh, I think President Obama has said it was a low point of, low point of his presidency. So my sense is if you know, a couple dozen children are killed like that, if that doesn't change the politics, it's hard to imagine what will. So there's going, to be, there's going to be a debate, and I think there'll be a lot more noise, but I, I am very, very skeptical about the possibility of anything meaningful in terms of gun, gun restrictions passing this Congress or getting signed by this president. And Jordan Phelps, our colleague over at the White House, joins us live from there. And Jordan, that moment we just saw the president participate in alongside First Lady Melania Trump and the vice president and his wife as well, that was a new moment for this president. This is, as we've often said, this is events happening to the president he is then forced to react to. What do we expect to see from him in the days moving forward? Yeah, Amna, uh, this is a, a new role for the president playing consular in chief. Of course, we did see him play this role uh, in the wake of that shooting in Alexandria, uh, where Representative Steve Scalise was injured. Um, but we do expect the president to to go out to Las Vegas on Wednesday to meet with first responders, officials on the ground there, and the families. Um, and we've already heard from this president today uh, that this is a, a moment for unity. That's what the president is calling for. Uh, he's laying aside you know, the more divisive rhetoric that we sometimes hear from President Trump and focusing on what unites us as Americans. And 
That's what we expect to see from President Trump in the days going forward. That's what the country expects to see from a president in this consular in chief role. Um, so we'll see if the president is able to, to stay on message on that. Of course, this also comes as the president is dealing with uh, the crisis uh, still ongoing in Puerto Rico following that hurricane. Um, and the president has received a lot of criticism for his response there. So uh, this is an opportunity for the president to demonstrate that very solid, assuring leadership uh, in the wake uh, or in the midst of the, um, the criticism he's receiving for his response in Puerto Rico. So, John Cohen, from your perspective now, obviously you spent years on the law enforcement side and working at the federal level as well. What would you expect to see or hope to see from the administration or other elected officials moving forward? Well, I, I think uh, we have to change. There's several things we need to do. One, um, in this administration's first budget, they sought to cut uh, funding for state and local law enforcement uh, that is used for uh, law enforcement to be to train and to be better prepared to respond to these types of attacks uh, or to put in place capabilities to be better able to prevent those types of attacks. So obviously, you know, funding those efforts uh, are important. But I think what it also requires is we have to change the way we have law enforcement works with others at the community to evaluate uh, individuals who come to their attention. Uh, and that requires uh, training and, and policy changes so that the FBI uh, and others at the federal law enforcement level are working more closely with state and locals as we evaluate um, the risk posed by individuals who come to their attention. And that's going to take direction from the top. And quite frankly, the focus has been not on this issue of late. It's been on different types of threats. And we'll see if that focus then changes. John Cohen joining us on the phone. Jordan Phelps at the White House, John Parkinson on Capitol Hill, and of course our political director Rick Klein in the D.C. Bureau. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks to all of you for watching as well. For continuing coverage, of course, head over to abcnews.com anytime for the latest or download the ABC News app. Get all those breaking news headlines and updates right to your phone or mobile device. For now, I'm Amna Nawaz, and I'll see you back here soon.